The local plan is the most important document that nobody has ever heard of and actually you know it's it, it touches every part of every resident's life for tomorrow for next week for next year for 10 years time housing development it touches how they're going to live their lives in the economy it picks up issues around you know social inequality and the things that are really important the local plan is like a map for the residents to go forward so even though we have just adopted a local plan that local plan was started um, in about 2013 so the basis of the map we've got now is quite old and we need to put in place something as efficiently but quickly to provide a map from now moving forward. The local plan as Katie has said is a map and it's not just a map it's a map that shows where we will be uh, looking at putting new houses, new employment spaces, new shops, uh, leisure parks mm -hmm. It's a map that shows how the Greater Cambridge area will develop over the next 10, 15, 20 years and it affects everybody. We're very keen to make sure that every resident has a voice. We want to sit with you and make the opportunity for you to be heard so we're trying, that's why we're here on this video. We can't have everything if we're going to have so many thousand houses, how do we fit that in, where do we put it, you know, where do the businesses go um, and where would we put the parks and the leisure places and retail space that we need. So these are some of the things that we need to weigh up and decide we can have this but we can't have that. Everybody has an opinion about what should happen in Queen Edith's. It's extremely hard for residents to get their voices heard in the middle of contested spaces which are, you know, having schemes put forward by the County Council, the Combined Authority, the City Council, the GCP, Uncle Tom Cobley and all. And um, I think possibly we were naive last time and we didn't get involved in the local plan making process early enough and I would hate to make the same mistake a second time. Our involvement has really been uh, on the face of a delivery vehicle, being a house builder. Um, so really what we were looking for today is clarity um, so that we can deliver and uh, along the process all the, the landowners, the d uh, developers and homeowners at the end all understand what needs to be delivered. There is no holistic view of all the developments that are taking place and that is a major, major concern for everybody as far as I'm concerned. The transport links are going to be, if they are not looked into holistically, we will have a huge, huge problem with traffic just backing up and not moving. My main concern is, is the um, health of the river and the springs and um, the, the over extraction of water. Um, and um, the situation is likely to get worse with the more development and so something really does need to be done to persuade people to use less water. Everybody says oh green belt is green belt full stop but it's not. There are several categories of green belts and you can start at one end which is the, you know, the, the cricket pitch in the village which is absolutely sacrosanct you must not touch that. that to me that is green belt full stop. But then at the other end, there's several categories down the line, and you get the scrubland which nobody even walks the dog on. Now, you know, that is green belt, but why can't we build on that? And there's several gradations in between. Of course, I take the values for the residents as being of great importance. And I think that has been somewhat forgotten. It's all about tarmac and machinery and, and not the, the actual improvements for the people living along the road. So uh, what I am worried about is air pollution. Will it increase a lot for our residents? I think it's the uh, distribution of the future development in the area needs to be more uh, diversified with regards to um, spreading it out to the other parts of Cambridge and the urban areas. Uh, at the moment it seems to be more heavily loaded onto South Cambridgeshire and the north west of Cambridge um, and other areas don't really seem to have the uh, correct distribution of that future development. There is already a, a vibrant economy that has um, highly motivated people who are looking forward to driving it forward and want to see growth 
um, there's a huge understanding of a need for homes and so there is willingness and opportunity to to grow the economy and to build homes there are clearly huge challenges in how you do that where you put the homes where you put the jobs and how you afford to do all of that on top of keeping everything very green uh, but this is the place where people think into the future and innovate and that creates a great opportunity. I think the big issue to do with Cambridge is trying to reconcile the needs of growth, uh, uh, carbon neutral uh, economy, uh, to do with issues around whether or not we want to have people cycling and walking to work. All of those things impact on where we build our houses and also simply put building houses closer to where people work. So there's, for, for me that's, that's crucial. If we are really serious about developing Cambridge in a carbon neutral, sensible, sustainable way, we need to be making it easier for people to get to their places of work closer so that they can cycle, walk and get the bus. And one of the thing, really key important things I think we need to be looking at is the supply of land coming forward. At the moment we just try and achieve a five year uh, land supply for housing but we need to look beyond that and try and look towards you know, 10, 15 year land supply so people have certainty of where development's coming forward. So the next formal stage will be issues and options consultation which is going to be later on this year probably around about November time and um, over the next two months we'll be formulating all of the comments that we've had back from people from these two workshops the previous two workshops last week and then trying to feed that into a really high level document that outlines those challenges and those opportunities so we can then go and do some really focused consultations so again probably a series of workshops probably even greater coverage we're going to look to really focus on some of the interest groups and some of those areas that we haven't managed to reach in this this process and kind of refine that down a little bit but that will be will be any time from October through to November we'll be you know sending out updates on that process and we really want people to get involved in that so that that's a really important part for us.